Thank you for joining me. I'm Gord Long. A reminder before we begin, do not trade from any of these slides. They are commentary for educational and discussion purposes only. Always consult a professional financial advisor before making any investment decisions. In this year's first Under the Lens video, I'd like to set the stage for our focus in 2021. For those new to our service, it may be helpful to start by differentiating our monthly under the lens video from our monthly long wave video. The long wave videos focus on the markets from a technical analysis, fundamental risk and sentiment perspective as shown at the top. The under the lens video examines markets from a larger macro perspective regarding those elements that eventually affect trends in fundamentals and risk, but also dislocations or false beliefs that can suddenly arrive like black swans and shock markets with major lifts and or sell-offs. Anyone who has been in the markets long enough understands how months or even years of profits can suddenly and abruptly disappear almost instantaneously. This year we hope to focus our under the lens macro analytics in an increasingly structured fashion as shown on the outline headings on the left here. We think it will better assist us and you with categorizing market risk and portfolio exposures. We have just issued our annual thesis paper entitled Social Suppression. It brings together a lot of prior thesis papers which point to clear dislocations and turmoil ahead. As such, we need to outline not so much what our conclusions are in this year's thesis paper, but rather a large number of critical elements that need to be fully appreciated there are sufficient areas to be discussed as a platform for forward ongoing analysis that we have been forced to break this discussion into three parts. We hate to do this, but there are over 100 slides involved, many of which we feel we will be referring to throughout 2021. In this session, we'll tackle part one, the central problems facing the global macro that are most likely to impact your policy strategies and positioning this year. What we have witnessed throughout the progression of our annual thesis papers over the last decade is the continuous surrender of both personal and economic freedoms. These freedoms were eroded out of fear and desire by we the people for the perceived guarantees of security and safety. It started with economic security in terms of job security after the dot-com bubble implosion as corporations outsourced, downsized, right-sized, offshore, while the mom-and-pop businesses and downtown merchants were lost to corporate franchisers, malls, and big-box stores. Then financial security, where we experienced pressures in the form of skyrocketing college costs, student debt, a shift from defined to contributory pensions with the loss of pensions, benefit reductions, and soaring medical costs with reduced hours worked. Then we next experience physical safety, that is terrorism, and our physical safety after 9-11 as the world changed due to bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, domestic school shootings that seem to be rampant almost on a daily basis. Now it is health safety. It is a pandemic. It is about the pandemic and the safety of the health of family and friends. COVID-19 pandemic social distancing, lockdowns that everyone is acutely aware of. Was this an orchestrated progression? These man-made actions and initiatives were as a result and contributors to a number of mounting globalization problems. In turn, these developments pushed the political landscape further towards the bottom of the Nolan chart to the right. It's not about left or right. It's actually about degrees of freedom on the vertical axis here. A chronology of poor policy prescriptions, expanding government control, and a reserve currency and risk-free benchmark problem have set the stage for a cocktail of social unrest and shift towards looming social suppression. We'll come back to this in more detail. This is the list of some of the major problems facing global leadership financial institutions and political regimes. Almost all have been explored in prior annual thesis papers. A lack of real global growth, insufficient need for labor because of artificial intelligence, robotics, which is only beginning. Populations becoming unsupportable financially, 
unfundable entitlements and pensions, unsustainable global debt and leverage, global trade imbalances, and a shift from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. These global problems manifested themselves in the form of crises spreading from domestic uh, and financial to in 2008-2009. That was the U.S. mortgage market, started as a collapse in credit default swaps, underpinning collateralized debt obligations, which supported the U.S. mortgage market through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which forced both into government-guaranteed conservatorships. Then we had economic regional issues in 2012-2014. They took the form of an EU banking crisis that started in Greece, spread to Cyprus, and into the southern peripheral countries labeled the pigs at the time, Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, before being halted by an explosion in the EU Target 2 payment system. Then we've seen political global um, in 2018-2020, completely to be expected, as we originally drew this chart right after the financial crisis. Global central banks, we've seen an explosion of over $15 trillion in global central banks' balance sheet to supply liquidity to a collateral short lending edifice unable to maintain credit growth sufficient to continue to roll over debt and fund sufficient debt growth. We now have a globalization problem. Our annual thesis paper documented the above evolution within the context of strategic developments. In the early part of the last decade, we witnessed with the following thesis papers in 2010, Extend and Pretend, rather than address issues, our elected officials chose to avoid the tough decisions, that is, kick the can down the road. In 2011, on currency wars or beggar thy neighbor, we saw the easy way to gain competitive advantage, at least in the short term, was to adopt beggar thy neighbor policies of currency manipulation. In 2012's financial repression thesis paper, we outlined that the easy way to solve a lack of productivity investment, at least they felt in the short term, was to implement macro prudential policies of financial repression, which misprices the price of risk and cripples the effect of market price discovery. What these are, are poor policy prescriptions, moral malady. We witnessed policies that fostered misinformation, data manipulation, monetary malfeasance, mispricing of risk, and other short-term quick-fix approaches, all of which led to malinvestment. It was really monetary malpractice, and as a result, we saw the emergence of moral hazard, unattended consequences, dysfunctional markets. The deceptions and distortions and delusions that occurred can and only led to an era of monetary malpractice. Then we faced, in the middle years of the last decade, the following thesis papers in 2013, Statism. A failing economic system as a result of unsound money was forcing government, as a consequence, to enforce control in lieu of natural self-correcting systems. In 2014's paper on the globalization trap, we saw mounting trade imbalances as a result of developed economies consuming more than they produced, distorted current account balances, and balance of payments resulting in unsupportable debt balances. In 2015's fiduciary failure thesis paper, we saw and explored developed economies becoming increasingly burdened and trapped by unfundable entitlement programs, which were left to worsen and become the problem of future political administrations. This whole continuing kick the can down the road. In 2016, we focused on how we saw an erosion of trust, an inevitable loss of trust in our politicians, the government, financial institutions, and a status quo. All grew within the electorate as populism grew. With it came new political leaders with socialist, nationalist, and anti-government philosophies. The developments led to a shift towards statism in the progression outlined here, which we documented for a number of years. We have been living under macroprudential economic policies of financial repression since the turn of the millennium, and for longer than any time in American history, with no end game in sight. In the last part of the last decade, we witnessed with the following thesis papers in 2017 the illusion of growth. 
government deficit borrowing being double count as the G and C in the GDP formula, hiding the degree of insufficient real growth occurring over the last three decades. In 2018's New World Order thesis paper, we outlined that the U.S. is becoming has become no longer the unipolar controlling power in a new significantly changing multipolar world and the profound implications of that. In 2019, we focused on de-dollarization, the U.S.'s use of economic sanctions, which effectively weaponized the U.S. dollar, thereby forcing targeted countries and their trading partners to reduce their U.S. dollar dependency. Additionally, the BRICs have steadily been reducing their U.S. dollar currency reserves, along with many countries adopting bilateral trade agreements using their own currencies. This is not something that we are worrying about today, but is cracking the foundation of the global system. And you never know when the fissures are actually going to completely collapse. In 2020, our focus was on the rising amount of global conflict we are witnessing. Not since the Cold War have tensions been higher around the world, from the South China Sea to Taiwan to Hong Kong, India, Iran, Syria, Yemen, Sudan. These conflicts continue to go unresolved with escalating power tensions. The world's modern post-World War II financial system is built on two bedrocks which are now under assault. The U.S. dollar, that is, as the world's reserve currency and trade currency, and the risk-free benchmark, that is, the U.S. long bond is still considered the benchmark for the pricing globally of risk. Additionally, we outlined in last year's thesis paper, we have entered an era of global conflict based on a number of factors including economic survival for many players. We have also entered into an era of a new Cold War with China. Global conflict will involve new forms of conflict, that is, low-intensity conflict, it is presently well underway. We have three major power centers competing for global control, which we outlined in this year's thesis paper, Social Suppression. All three place us on the road to centralized government control, not decentralization where we should be headed. It is leading us away from the choice and power of the individual to the control of collectivism and central governments. It is leading us away from capitalism and towards socialism, or even worse. It is leading us towards statism, totalitarian approaches, and lost freedoms. The U.S. is the last bastion of freedom and capitalism. The U.S. was founded on the ideas of the rights of the individual, i.e. the right to own property, for example. The freedom of the individual was the road to economic prosperity. And in God we trust the divine authority and all powers come from God and the people. The globalists believe this is not the case and is no longer possible. They believe the world needs centralized global planning and coordination. The state must control property, i.e. the cornerstone of communism. Money supply must be controlled globally. Standard globalization taxation must be implemented, such as carbon tax and universal basic income. Democracy's purpose to them is to maintain the masses' belief that they actually have an input which we spell out this year, social suppression, is what's being now taken away. The party apparatus at the country level, they believe, must be the controller, not the people. Religion is only a cult to them, which has no meaningful value, which is exactly contrary to what the Founding Fathers based the whole Constitution of America on. At the same time, we are entering a time where the U.S. national debt continues its exponential trajectory, in March of 2009, the Dow touched around 6,700, while the U.S. national debt was over 10 trillion. Perhaps we're approaching another such divergence, where the Dow dives 15,000 points or more to maybe even below 15,000 is a possibility, according to this chart. However, this will not be allowed. Period. The probability, therefore, continues to increase that, as we pointed out in last February's Under the Lens Outlook, we are highly likely headed towards some form of the nationalization of U.S. and global financial markets. Certainly, at minimally, they mean the loss of freely trading markets. As I always remind you in these videos, remember politicians and central banks will print the money to solve any and all problems until such time as no one will take the money or it has no value. 
That day is still in the future, so take advantage of the opportunities as they currently exist. Investing is always easier when you know with relative certainty how the powers to be will react. Your chances of success go up dramatically. The powers to be are now effectively trapped by policies of fiat currencies, unsound money, political polarization, and global policy paralysis. I'd like to take a moment as a reminder, do not trade from any of these slides. They are for educational and discussion purposes only. As negative as these comments often are, there has seldom been a better time for investing. However, it requires careful analysis and not following what has been traditionally the true and tried approaches. Do your reading. Make sure you have a knowledgeable and well-informed financial advisor to assist you. So until we talk again, May 2021 turn out to be an outstanding investment year for you and your family. And I sincerely thank you for listening.